was meant to hit face first into a pillar, but as I flew in, I ended up going more head first. I'm on the mat going, oh, let me see if I can still move my toe. When we rehearsed that one, I had a helmet on and I swung down. I could hear like wow. rubbing on my head. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, we should probably gosh. pull that safety line up a little tighter. So then I tap Tyler to hit the brakes and I'm looking going, it's too late. This car is about to smash Sam in the legs. I was like, holy cow. It's like, I had this moment of like, uh oh. What's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of Stop Men React, and we're here with an extra special fancy guest, Daniel Stevens. Daniel's done a lot of work. What's some of this work that you've done? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I mean, I've been very lucky. I mean, started doing stunts in Australia, then moved over here, LA, in uh, 2006. Being a tall white guy, <laughs> I've tended to double a lot of superheroes. <laughs> uh, I've doubled Wolverine on four films. Iron Man, Thor, Star-Lord, Green Lantern, don't mention that one, um, <laughs> Winter Soldier. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably about it. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> I tend to do a lot of fight stuff and uh, writing wires and okay. yeah, generally getting beaten up for actors. Oh, great. We're having a bunch of great clips to look at. Oh, then. yeah. And Guy's here too. Hi, guys. I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> another superhero right here. Yeah, yeah just yeah. one now. I got, I got one under my belt. Guy's very accomplished as well, but this show's not about This, this right is now. about Daniel Stevens. This is not about <laughs> me at all. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's just jump into some of the stuff that you've done. Guys, whatever this is, take it outside. Ooh. Mm, the, the old blades. school. The old school claws. Yeah. So that was you, huh? That's me. Oh, you can Ooh, see my back pad in that shot. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. head snaps back pretty hard. When yeah, there. just the amount of rehearsals we did, my neck, by, even before we shot this, my neck was trashed. Yeah, I could no longer hold my head up. Is he wired up to you or is he just hugging you and hoping for the best? That was actually several pieces. We run at each other the first stunt where we run together and I'm on a traveling rig and he's on a traveling rig so he can do the gallop. And then I'm running basically into a, a dead man, but this time I'm actually running into a ratchet. Mm. So it's paying out mm. slack. And as soon as we hit, the guy on the button hits it and Sam has to grab me and then we get ratcheted together. So that's the first stunt. And then the second stunt was camera outside the breakaway doors. Are you landing on any sort of pad or is that right into the ground? There was pads underneath and then that rubber bark stuff was put across the top of it. So it's a little bit soft. And then Sam ended up trashing his hand because he had his hand underneath me. So I landed oh. all my weight on his, his hand. hand. He get up, got up and his hand's bleeding. You know, it's crazy. Like you talk about this really intense setup for like the tackle and all that kind of stuff. But what I see in the edit, it's just like two quick insert shots. Yeah, because I mean, as they like to do, they want to cut into the actor's face. So they're cutting out of the tackle and they've got a shot of you Shoot. literally just reacting and that's the beat just to tie the actor into it. Pretty choppy, that edit. At least they show the smack into the ground through the door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's true. I'm not going to say this is the greatest superhero <laughs> movie ever made. <laughs> but for me, it was some of the biggest stunts I've done. It was definitely the most action I've done in a film. And this job was actually the first job I ever met and worked with Sam Hargrave, which led to a long career of working together. There's lots of moments in this film when we're working on it where Sam Hargrave and I are starting and they're doing a three, two, one count. And we're basically standing there hugging each other. Yeah. Waiting for a stunt to happen. And that's like why you guys tackle so through close. the doors or there's another tackle through a window. Here like, here we are, hugging again, <laughs> waiting for them to say action. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that tackle through the window is a good one. Wow. So that was three separate stunts all cut together. The first one is a tackle through a practical window, which, well, a breakaway window, mm -hmm. which is still real glass, but they use special effects poppers to shatter the glass. They actually put a net outside the window and then land in the net. The net's made of rope, essentially. Right. That doesn't feel good. They put t a tarp in the net. <laughs> Oh, so, no. so that the glass wouldn't cut the net, but then we basically lie in a burrito yeah, yeah. full of glass <laughs> and get covered with glass shards. Oh, no. Luckily, Sam Hargrave, he's on his back. He's got a big coat on it, but I had a tank top, but my shoulders are all cut up. He had glass all down the back of his neck, and then we have to slowly crawl out of this thing. Oh, so that wasn't fun. But then the next take is from the outside of the window, we basically do a ratchet. So there's another one, right. Sam and I are hugging each other, waiting for the countdown, three, two, one, get ratcheted out the window and do a big pendulum swing and no impact. So that was actually a pretty fun ride. And then they're looking at the glass because there's four panes of glass. We mm -hmm. went through the bottom two. They're meant to pop all four panes of glass, but the top uh, two didn't yeah. break. So then we had to come back and do the same stunt again the next day. And then they popped all four windows. 
Sorry. which you see from this angle, they popped mm -hmm. all four, but then the outside, they didn't use yeah. that shot. Interesting. They used the first shot where the glass didn't even break. Mm. And then the third shot is us looking straight down and just getting on a descent to drop straight down on, onto the concrete, which was padded concrete. Do you have any aches that persist from the years of stunt work? Uh, my back's not good. Yeah. I had two herniated discs. One of them actually was in Free Guy. where I was flying flat and was meant to hit face first into a pillar and then spin off it. And there's a dead man line on my back, which is meant to, as soon as I get there, is what's going to spin me backwards. Yep. But as I flew in, I ended up going more head first and then just scorpion my back so bad, bent backwards. And I heard a crack in my neck and my lower back. I'm on the mat going, oh, let me see if I can still move my toes. I'm like, yeah, I think I can, but that was not good. Funny thing was, it cuts from my practical hit then into another visual Video effects effect, stunt so, to the ground. Yeah. So it could have been all visual effect. Uh, but other than that, I mean, stunt injury wise, I've been pretty fortunate. Got 15 stitches above my eye on that first Wolverine. And that's really the only time I've been to hospital from set. Mm. Playtime's over, catch me. I don't know what to <laughs> This one was practical stunt on a wire. Basically get thrown and slide across the concrete. The first take of that one, I actually landed with my arm up. And right. I felt my shoulder go. I was like, oh yeah, that's not good. Uh, so then the second take, I tucked my shoulder your under. Man. I'm like, yep, that hurts just as much. <laughs> 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 uh, and then eventually we got the shot, so that was good. Yeah, what was the surface for that one? Because there's no road rash. There was padding, so about an inch of foam, mm -hmm. but then a slidey board like on top, which board, is like yeah, plywood yeah. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's still hard, but then they put this like shuffleboard wax on the surface, which is super slippery. Hmm. So you're still landing on a hard surface, but it's got a bit of cushion for the impact. Mm -hmm. And actually in that shot, I was wearing a, an elbow pad oh, and cool. just had a flesh colored sleeve on it. And then, oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's where VFX can be a friend, definitely. These days, can you wear pads more frequently and have VFX paint them out? Or is it still kind of like a, hey, your character's in a muscle shirt, good luck? You can, definitely. It, and well, the, not just wearing pads, but padding your set oh. and the floor. Mm. You can paint that stuff out a lot easier. Right. He basically just picked me up and tackled me to the ground. We had padding on the ground, so it wasn't too bad. The stunt coordinator, Chris O'Hara, goes, just get more height than this last one. And he just took me straight up and straight down <laughs> and landed his 315 pounds of his shoulder straight into my chest. Uh. Oh my God, I thought I broke all my ribs. <laughs> it was such <laughs> a hard impact. Oh my God. And I think in the end, they still used the flatter take anyway. <laughs> There's a close-up of the hands squeezing Ryan's chest, and then he's grabbing Aaron's wrists. wrists. So in that shot, that's actually my hand on the right side and Ryan's hand on the left side, <laughs> and Aaron's just squeezing a dummy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, you guys want to keep up with us, see what's going on with Daniel Stevens and other great stunt performers? Click that subscribe button. That was uh, Tony Scott, right? Tony Scott's last film. This job was really fun basically just doing practical stunts real stuff real trains i mean there was some visual effects as a shot where i fall between the train carriages there was a line basically to stop me from going dying. under right yeah <laughs> so they got to paint out stuff like that but it was still practical fall between train cars at 40 miles an hour yeah there we go that's you on a moving train doing that that's all practical 40 yep. miles an hour wow just trust fall basically mm -hmm. when we rehearsed that one i had a helmet on and i swung down and my helmet was on the tracks i could hear like wow. rubbing on my head i'm like oh, ah yeah we should probably gosh. pull that safety line up a little tighter and then the craziest part of that was just breathing in all this like uh what was it like sawdust it was potato flakes and puffed wheat because they <laughs> needed something biodegradable right because they're just dumping tons of it out into the countryside in ohio they just had these mortars firing this crap in my face and it was so hard to breathe every breath would be sucking that stuff in i'd try and cough and get fresh air in and every breath was sucking more right. in that was worse than the hanging between the train cars because wow. at that stage i'm just trying not to suffocate yeah it's yeah you see lot. the close-up shots on yes. Chris? <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> apparently afterwards there's just all this deer coming out of the forest oh bet living on this stuff <laughs> yeah. oh my God! Do it! Do it! so then i swing down on purpose but yeah the yeah. first take i 
was not. <laughs> Needed a change, change of pants <laughs> after that one. The first take, we're doing 40 miles an hour and the stunt coordinator is like, you got to be aware of that wind shear as you jump off. And I'm thinking it's not, it can't be that bad. Right. Cause I'm already going 40. So it's not like the wind's going to change when I jump. But as soon as I jump, that pulled me about maybe two feet to the right. And I'm jumping to grab two handrails. And I jumped out and completely missed that left one oh, and just grabbed right, both, both hands on that right wow. hand rail so tight. And I swung down, my feet clipped the con like the boulders at the bottom, hit that and I swung and pulled myself up so tight, like hanging on death grip onto that handrail. Like, holy cow, that scared the crap out of me. And then Tony Scott came up afterwards. He's like, did you mean to fall down like that? And I was like, no, not really. And then he goes, can you do it again? I was like, yeah, I can do that again. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know it's coming, I can actually right. do it on purpose. But yeah, the first one scared the crap out of me. After a while, I started getting a little cocky with it and let my feet come down and hit hard. And then I had to remind myself, we're actually doing 40 miles an hour. Right. <laughs> so it's not, it's not smooth concrete either. So you hit that gravel and it gets a bit of a whip action. What exactly was your position for this film? This film, directed by Sam Hargrave, who I first worked with on X-Men Origins Wolverine. Lots of hugs. 15 years later, now he's a director. Yeah. And he has me stunt coordinate his first film. See what happens when you hug somebody? Yes, yeah, so all those hugs made off. <laughs> Oh, this is that one take, This is the, the one <laughs> as we called it, which is, yeah, stitched together one Sam knew exactly what he wanted and we needed the camera in a lot of risky spots. Sam was actually operating camera strapped to the front of a Polaris ATV flying through traffic. I'm sitting in the back seat of the Polaris. Mm -hmm. The head rigger is hanging out of the side and then a stunt guy, Tyler Witte, is driving the Polaris. So he's chasing that car and then at the right moment, I have to tap him on the shoulder so he gets on the brakes right. and then the camera is basically right. over the hood of the car and that reverse 180. And each time the car is a bit far away. So then I'm just waiting a little longer. I'm like, like I'm going to get it even Ooh. closer, which was if that was a camera guy, I would never take that risk. But because right. it's Sam, Sam, he's my friend. I could break his legs. <laughs> <laughs> so then I tapped Tyler to hit the brakes and I'm looking going, it's too late. This car is about to smash Sam in the legs. I was like, holy cow. And he just got over the hood and it was so good. But I was like, I had this moment of like, uh oh, I've just ruined the film. No, right by now. the hugs will see this. Yeah. So Ash Aquila, our head rigger, he disconnects Sam right as we hit the brakes. And then he jumps off and then Sam jumps camera through the window and the window frame there is the stitch. It's really cool. I love that stuff. Nerf. Hemsworth actually showed up for this job three days before we started shooting. <laughs> and we went straight into this sequence. <laughs> He's a legit kickboxer. His martial arts stuff's really good. That fall across through the awning there, was that a real guy taking that hit all the way down to the concrete or? What do you think that was? I think that was a dummy. It was a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't realize it, but yeah, it was a dummy. And it, the falling through the tarp is what helped hide it as well. And it's helped because he's meant to be dead when he goes over. So he should be a limp body. There's another dummy in the movie somewhere else. Maybe your followers in the comments can see, see if they can say where it is. It's not in the one, but it's in another scene in the movie. There is a dummy that gets wrecked. And that's Randeep. He's a massive star in India. I mean, to us, he was just the cool dude. Came in, rehearsed, <laughs> doing all the stuff, getting gritty, learning all the fights. So Dan Carter is doubling Randeep and then Bobby Hanton doubling Hemsworth. They go off and Dan Carter landed with his foot underneath him and he broke his foot. Watch his foot. Yeah. So his foot's underneath and completely twists his ankle backwards. Oh, and then he still gets up and does two more takes after that. Hell yeah, Dan Carter. Tough as hell. Yeah. So his foot is broken now. Take three. And exactly. Sam's like, Ah, we need to go again. And so I go to Dan, I'm like, this is where it's up to the stunt guy. Like I have to ju trust his judgment. Like I'm like, can you do it again or not? He's like, yeah, I can do it again. Just give me a minute. He's like icing it. He didn't know his foot was broken. He knew he hurt his foot, but it still hurt. So he straps it up. We give him a 10, 15 minutes. Take four goes off. Still doesn't stitch to the shot before. And by now his foot is throbbing and it's so much harder for him to push off over this edge and he doesn't get as much push off and he came up short and this is the shot that made the film. And he actually gets knocked out, uh, out cold in this take. So you watch him here, the back of his head clips the edge of the truck, truck. instead of hitting onto the top. I mean, everything's padded, the, that's all pads in the back and the edge of the truck has two inches of foam on it, but it's so much whiplash on his neck 
that he's out cold. And the foot. shot. Andy has a broken foot. Damn. And the shot actually is kind of cool. Like originally he was jumping out further and clipping the edge of the awning. But this one, it looks like he's trying to grab the gun as he's going. It was actually a really cool yeah. shot. That one won a World Stunt Award for him, hardest hit. The more I, I talk to you guys, the more it's like, the point is to make it look like you wreck yourself for a shot, to be able to get back up right. and do it again. And then yeah. come back the next day and do it again. It's, yeah. it's a job. You're not trying to just do a daredevil thing where you put it all on the line for that one day and then you're done. You need to be able to go to work the next day and right. the next day and the next day. So it's all about reducing the risks and making it as safe as possible. And nowadays, visual effects helps a ton. Special effects helps a ton. So you can hide pads, you can hide wires and make things safer. There's a lot more paperwork if you do get injured on set. <laughs> and nobody wants to fill out paperwork. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, it still happens. You still get injured, but it's not the goal and it's not go out of your way to wreck yourself to the point where you cannot work again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys saw a piece of extraction. We saw one dummy. According to Daniel Stevens, though, there's two more dummy scenes in that film. I want you guys to put in the comments exactly where those dummy scenes are. Yo, Guy, that gives me an even better idea. Not just dummy scenes in that film. I want you to tell us about your favorite dummy scenes in any film. And you can't say that dummy from Kingsman. We've, we've already seen it. We've seen that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you told us about was awesome. Learning about the long take from extraction, all the ratchets and wire pulls that you've done, even going back like looking at the original Wolverine and like seeing how hard some of those hits were, how much whiplash was happening mm -hmm. in all these shots. Like I've never I've never paid attention to how much whiplash happens in all these shots. I think I've I think I saw like three different people get like five concussions over the course of the past hour here. Yeah. Right. If people want to follow your your exploits, if they want to like see the work that you do, is there a place where they could follow you? Yeah, most of my stuff's on uh, Instagram, Daniel Stevens one. Okay. I'm on TikTok as well. I think it's Daniel Stevens Stunts. I really appreciate you joining us and like telling us some of your stories and sharing some Thanks of your Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure. Anytime. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Go give Daniel a shout and tell him that he does some awesome work and thank him for being on the show with us. Yeah, I mean, you definitely can come back. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of yeah. movies on your IMDb list that like would be worth talking about. Yeah, sure. Like. Anytime. <laughs> Let me know. I'll be here. See you next time. See you See next, you next time. time. Peace. There is a team behind the performer that's performing the stunt gag, the riggers. And the riggers have a dance that they play with the performer, which is working on the count and doing the pull. Three, two, one, up! Pull, of course, will either lift or yank or cause a fly of some sort of uh, motion.